Welcome to the Gospel of Luke. We're at Luke chapter 13, and today verses 14 to 17. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Oh, oh no. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Jesus calls him out. He doesn't want anybody to be healed on the Sabbath. There's six working days to do that. And Jesus sets this guy straight, straight up, you know, you're a hypocrite. Now, that's a pretty intense thing for Jesus to say, not very uh, relational, but sometimes you need to hear it that way. You know, when I was living in uh, Washington State for a while, we had, uh, we had a, a bunch of guineas. It's a kind of a bird, a very loud and, uh, bird, and, and on Sabbath, let me tell you, I would, before I left for church, I'd go out and we would make sure the guineas were fed and watered because you, you can't just say, hey, you've got to suffer today. You feed your animals. Feed them every day. You don't take a day off. The Lord gives us what we need every day. He doesn't take a day off. And the Sabbath's a day to be blessed. And it's, it's, it's God wanted to heal that woman that we talked about yesterday morning. And this guy, in the, this synagogue ruler, he's, he's, he's high bound. He's stuck in old thinking and, and things that are not Bible thinking. So we need to go out there and, and be true to what God wants for us and, and let God be our leader. You know, it's not meant that the Sabbath would be a uh, frustration, privation, and on the Sabbath, what? You can't go to the bathroom on the Sabbath? These are the kind of things that the devil would like to stack up on the Sabbath. God wants it to be a help and a blessing to us. I've observed the Seventh-day Sabbath since 19, 1988 or 89, somewhere in there, and it's been a blessing to me all the time. One of the best decisions I ever made in my life to, to be true to God, to when the Bible shows us God's truth, to step out and, and do it. It's drawn me closer to Jesus. Yes, may the guy here in the synagogue, may, may Jesus be successful in straightening this guy out. We, we don't know if he was successful, but he called him out. God's Sabbath is there because he loves us. It's not there to bear down upon us and be a bunch of crazy rules. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your Bible truth. Thank you for these truths that lead us to Jesus, that, that show, help us to put God first, that show us the way to go in a world that's gone crooked and gone away from you. Be our helper, be our blesser, Lord. Uh, on our own, we're, we're stuck, we're in big trouble, but Lord, you're our helper. We thank you for hearing our prayer and giving us so many gifts, even like the Sabbath and even healing on the Sabbath or any other time. In Jesus' name, we give thanks, amen. Friends, may the Lord bless you and watch over you and give you his special gifts and give you a blessing this coming Sabbath, beginning Friday night in carrying on through to the end of Saturday night. That's the seventh day. That's the Bible Sabbath. And there's a blessing for you in it.